So what I have chosen for today is uh, narrative poetry. And what narrative poetry is, is when we have a poem, one poem, telling a story. So maybe the most popular example of this is around Halloween time. There's Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven, um, which you can see examples of online. There's also um, thinking... In college, I had to read one called The Rime of the Ancient Mariner, which was all about um, sailing. And then I'm sure if you've read Percy Jackson, you are familiar with the story of Odysseus. And that was originally told in the Odyssey, which is an epic poem told, I mean, it's like hundreds of pages, but people used to memorize it and share it with people. So. Today's is much shorter. I just printed it out. And actually, because it is springtime and it should be baseball season right now, this poem is about a baseball game and it's called Casey at the Bet. So a little bit of history about this story. It was, uh, or poem, it was originally written in 1888 for a newspaper column by Ernest Lawrence Thayer. And it didn't gain a lot of attention. Basically, no one really gave it a whole lot of thought. But then a comic actor named DeWolf Hooper put it in the middle of his act for the next 50 years. He recited this poem 15,000 times over the course of the next 50 years, and it became really popular, and it is now considered the most famous poem about baseball ever written. So here we have Casey at the Bat. The outlook wasn't brilliant for the Mudville Nine that day. The score stood four to two with but one inning more to play. And then when Cooney died at first, and Barrows did the same, a pall-like silence fell upon the patrons of the game. A straggling few got up to go in deep despair. The rest clung to the hope that which springs eternal in the human breast. They thought if only Casey could but get a whack at that, we'd put up even money now with Casey at the bat. But Flynn preceded Casey, as did also Jimmy Blake, and the former was a Lulu while the latter was a cake. So upon that stricken multitude grim melancholy sat, for there seemed but little chance of Casey getting to the bat. But Flynn let drive a single to the wonderment of all, and Blake, the much despised, tore the cover off the ball. And when the dust had lifted and men saw what had occurred, there was Jimmy safe at second and Flynn a hugging third. Then from five thousand throats and more there rose a lusty yell. It rumbled through the valley, it rattled in the dell. It pounded on the mountain and recoiled upon the flat, for Casey, mighty Casey, was advancing to the bat. There was ease in Casey's manner as he stepped into his place. There was pride in Casey's bearing and a smile at Casey's face. And when, responding to the cheers, he lightly doffed his hat, no stranger in the crowd could doubt t'was Casey at the bat. Ten thousand eyes were on him as he rubbed his hands with dirt. Five thousand tongues applauded when he wiped them on his shirt. Then, while the writhing pitcher ground the ball into his hip, defiance flashed in Casey's eyes, a sneer curled Casey's lip. And now the leather-covered sphere came hurtling through the air, and Casey stood a-watching it in haughty grandeur there. Close by the sturdy batsman, the ball unheeded sped. That ain't my style, said Casey. Strike one, the umpire said. From the benches black with people there went a muffled roar, like the beating of the storm waves on a stern and distant shore. Kill him, kill the umpire, shouted some on the stand, and it's likely they'd have killed him had Casey not raised his hand. With a smile of Christian charity, great Casey's visage shone. He stilled the rising tumult, he bade the game go on. He signaled to the pitcher, and once more the dun sphere flew, but Casey still ignored it, and the umpire said, strike two. Fraud, cried the maddened thousands, and echoed answered, fraud. But one scornful look from Casey, and the audience was awed. 
They saw his face grow stern and cold. They saw his muscles strain. And they knew that Casey wouldn't let that ball go by again. The sneer has fled from Casey's lip. His teeth are clenched in hate. He pounds with cruel violence, his bat upon the plate. And now the pitcher holds the ball, and now he lets it go. And now the air is shattered by the force of Casey's blow. Oh, somewhere in this favored land, the sun is shining bright. The band is playing somewhere, and the somewhere hearts are light. And somewhere men are laughing, and little children shout. But there is no joy in Mudville. Great Casey has struck out. So there you have it, quite possibly, allegedly, the most famous poem ever written about baseball. So you all take care, hang in there, and I'll see you next week. Bye!